do it. All right, we're going to get started with Workforce Wednesday. If everyone could take their seats. All right, so good morning. My name is Jasmine Harvey, and I serve as a student engagement specialist here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We would like to welcome you all to Workforce Wednesday. Before we start, I do want to send out a thank you to those who joined us previously for our Skillathon Winners Awards program those who attended virtually as well as in person. So before we start Workforce Wednesday, I want to give a quick overview of what we do here in our Workforce Development Initiative. Also, we would love to know who is joining us virtually today. So those that have joined us virtually, if you will put your information in the chat and we'll connect, want to connect more with you in future Workforce Wednesday. So a quick overview, in 2018, MPB received a grant from Corporation for Public Broadcasting to create a workforce development initiative. Our initiative, Getting to Work Mississippi, focuses on sharing information for students and adults and providing the most relevant workforce and information and resources to Mississippians. We work with partners to assess challenges and opportunities and produce videos focused on career pathways and essential skills needed to be successful. MPB created a video series highlighting key industry sectors and a soft skills series with students. Workforce Wednesday was created in December of 2018 with the goals of gathering partners, networking, and collaborating to build a strong workforce. These meetings are hosted every third Wednesday of the month, and going forward, they will continue to be hybrid, in-person, and virtually. All resources and registrations, including any past videos from our workshops, can be found on our education website, which is education.mpbonline.org. And for our virtual attendance, don't worry, we have not forgotten about you. It will be submitted in the chat. So let's begin our program today. Today's workshop, Student Preparedness, Preparing Now for After High School, is focused on Mississippi students. Our workshop will feature highlighting jobs for Mississippi graduate and to highlight how to prepare students for the next school year, graduation, and any of those that's looking forward to college or entering into the workforce. So without further ado, it's time to introduce our guest speaker for today. Ms. Ramona Williams is the Chief Executive Officer of Jobs for Mississippi Graduates Incorporated, a youth college and career readiness organization. She has held posts for 12 years. In this capacity, she has been the catalyst for change, which has resulted in an increase in the number of participation served across the state, expanded the service area to include over 14 counties, 32 sites, increased the agency's assets, and facilitated a 94.5% graduation rate, a 40% post-secondary enrollment rate, and a 30% job attainment rate for the senior students in its program. Ms. Williams attributes these accomplishments to God, a dynamic team of 35 dedicated employees who labor tirelessly, diverse partnerships with educational industry, community, and parents. The company's motto is JMG, or Jobs for Mississippi Graduates, a solution that works. Ms. Williams has a Juris Doctorate from Mississippi College of Law, Master's Degree in Public Policy Administration from Jackson State University, whoop whoop, the I love and an undergraduate degree from Tulu College. She has over 30 years in the public service field. So let's give Ms. Williams a round of applause as she come up to present today. Good morning. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Uh, truly, Tulu is indeed the best college in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> uh, it is indeed an honor to, to present and tell others about our illustrious program, Jobs for Mississippi Graduates. Uh, very knowledgeable of our program. Just by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Jobs for Mississippi Graduates? Thank you, thank you. I see one. I think I see one. Oh, two. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, just by way of information, Jobs for Mississippi Graduates is indeed a nonprofit organization, a nonprofit educational organization um, that has been around uh, probably around 30 years here in the state of Mississippi. Our mission is to educate, to equip, and to empower students 
to obtain successful outcomes in life. Successful outcomes, not necessarily, but certainly including graduation from high school, being ready for the workforce of today, but not only today, the workforce of tomorrow. Um, what is Jobs for Mississippi graduates and what do we do? Our program is one where we offer an array of services to young people that are participants in our program. We have, in fact, four models for our program. We have a middle school model. We have a high school model for ninth through 12th graders. We have a college success model for those who are first generational students who have been participants in our program in high school and they go on to post-secondary institutions. We also have a dropout program where young people may have dropped out of high school they are in need of additional employability skills. They're in need of additional training. They're in need of getting their high school equivalency. Um, and that is our out of school model where we work with young people ages 18 to 24 years of age. Um, our program is one, as I noted, where we provide mentorship for young people. Mentorship in the form of making certain that if they have a career interest in the healthcare that we expose them to various healthcare institutions, to the various careers that are in the healthcare sector. If they're interested in being attorneys, if they're interested in being uh, judges, uh, truck driver, the whole gamut of industry that we have in our state of Mississippi. Uh, we prepare students for the workplace. How do we prepare them for the workplace? First and foremost, we have to ensure that the young people are aware of the various careers that are available in our state as well as those careers that are trending across our nation, our globe, we're in a global economy. Um, we seek to educate young people in that we have a remediation uh, program, a component of our program where we provide tutoring, we ensure that those who may need additional assistance as it relates to our um, state testing, uh, those various areas, biology, algebra, um, we ensure that they receive the requisite uh, tutoring and remediation in those areas. Um, employability skills, we provide that. We have a curriculum, a set curriculum, um, where we have over 80 competencies, where we teach young people every um, aspect of the workforce from resume writing, interviewing skills, how to look for jobs online, making certain that they are aware that when you have an interview, make certain you send a thank you note the nuances of becoming employed and getting on a career pathway. That's Jobs for Mississippi graduates. We seek to expose young people, as I noted, to um, the various careers and industry sectors in our state by field trips, um, by having guest speakers come into the classroom, as well as our national and state conferences where we have guest speakers to come in and speak to our students. Another component of our program is that we stress parental involvement. Parental involvement is so vitally important as it relates to our young people and ensuring that they are ready for the workforce of today and tomorrow. We need parents to be uh, uh, on their young person there in their household to make certain that they know you have to put on dress pants and a white shirt for your interview. We need parents to be involved with the young people to ensure that they um, are taking the ACT, that they're taking the college prep exams. We need parents involved to know what career sectors are in. We need parents there to reinforce what our program is all about. So parental involvement is a vital component of our program and it is one where we really, really want the parents to be involved. Oftentimes the students in our program, um, they may have always been in trouble in the high school and the parents really do not want to go out to the high school with Johnny anymore because all I do is come out to the school when Johnny is in trouble when Johnny um, has, has done something he shouldn't be doing. But our program, we want the parent to come out for positive activities that Johnny may be involved in. Um, referral services. We make certain that we have referral services with any of our mental health professionals, uh, those who are in uh, the drug and alcohol awareness and addiction programs. We have a referral service for those who may have experienced some kind of trauma in the household. Um, that also is a part of our program where we're seeking to ensure that the holistic needs of all our participants are provided for. Again, we want to be able to provide those services so that they are better prepared and well equipped for the workforce of today and tomorrow. 
I got an email. <laughs> Characteristics of the students that we serve. Uh, the students that we serve, I often say, they're not the creme de la creme of the high schools. They're not your Val and Sal. They are not the jocks on the athletic teams. They're not your um, homecoming court um, queens, but they're students. They're students in the high school. They're students uh, in our community. And we want to make certain that we're providing the requisite services to ensure that that population of students are indeed successful. Some of the characteristics of the students in our, in our high school program in particular, they have below average test scores. They may have excessive absenteeism. They may have been suspended, put on probation, expelled at least two times from the high school for being in trouble. They may be economically disadvantaged. Um, there are a number of studies that show that uh, the economics of the household oftentimes determine uh, the outcome and the well-being of the students. Um, they're a product of a single parent or they are in the uh, foster care system or they may be uh, juvenile delinquent in our court system as well. A number of the students that we serve, they have parents who have not graduated from high school. And I guess you're saying, why is that a characteristic? If the parent did not graduate from high school, they're not inclined to push and motivate the young person, their child in the household, to go and get a high school diploma. So again, that is some of the characteristics of the young people that we serve in the Jobs for Mississippi Graduates program. Um, our performance, our performance uh, just this past uh, school year, 2022, we're still in the process of collecting our data for the class of 2023, but I was able to find some of our data for the class of 2022. That particular class, we had a graduation rate of 98% meaning that of the seniors that were in our program that particular school year that ended 2022, last year, 98% uh, of those seniors were uh, graduates of their respective high schools. Um, of those seniors in our program that particular year, they received over $1.9 million in scholarships. Now that, that is a great, yes. <laughs> Pat myself on the back. And the reason for that is, as I noted, the characteristics of the students we serve. And yet, we would like to think, as a result of being in the JMG program, they were able to amass $1.9 million in scholarships. Um, and that is, is a great attribute of our program. Um, of uh, the students in our program that particular year, uh, 151 went on to post-secondary institutions. And we were able to keep up with this particular statistic because we follow them a year after they graduate from high school. If they're in the JMG program, we're going to follow those young people for one year just to see where they are. Um, if they're at Mississippi State University, we want to know, what was your GPA? What problems did you encounter? Um, how were you able to overcome those barriers that you as a freshman at Mississippi State to where you were able to see your sophomore year? Um, we make certain that the students in our program, that we're still providing the, what I call the hand-holding, the supportive services that they may need um, while they're their first year in college. Research shows that usually if they encounter any barriers that first semester, they're going back home. And the barriers may be, I couldn't find a parking place, or the dorm wasn't ready, or my financial aid didn't come, on, come in time, so I'm going back home. I'm going back home to be on grandmama's or mama's sofa. I'm going back home to be up under the tree. So it's so vitally important that we are there to provide those supportive wraparound services to ensure that they not only remain, that they enroll, but they remain at those post-secondary institutions. Um, another aspect of our program, of those in the class of 2022, 86 of those went directly into the workplace meaning that they had a job, they were lined up, they went on directly to work, be it um, they enrolled and got a CDL, or they may have had their CNA before they graduated from high school, and they decided to work before going on and getting a post-secondary certificate or diploma. Um, the students that we serve uh, in the 21-22 school year, we serve 1,214. Um, we, uh, were in 27 sites that particular school year. Um, again, I provide that data just to, as an information uh, piece for all of you in attendance and hearing me as it relates to the Jobs for Mississippi Graduates program. 
our program is one where um, we seek, as I stated, to cater to the holistic being of the students. We have dynamic partners. Um, we partner with school districts. Presently, um, I've received contracts with 13 school districts for this upcoming 23-24 school year. We'll be in Cahoma High School, Macomb High School, Hattiesburg, um, Hattiesburg Middle School, Knoxville County, uh, O'Bannon High School in Washington County, Jefferson Davis High, Ruleville High, Gentry High there in Sunflower uh, County, Riverside High, West Tallahatchie High, West Tallahatchie Middle, and Hollandale Simmons. That's just some of the contracts that I've received. Usually I'm receiving contracts well into August with the various school districts. Um, the contracts um, spell out what jobs for Mississippi graduates roles will be there in the schools and what the school district's responsibilities are. A little bit about uh, the cost of our program. Um, it, it's about $55,000 to implement our program at one school. That cost covers the salary for a full-time teacher. It covers the fringe benefits for that teacher, books and supplies for the classroom, uh, the field trips that all of the young people take. We cover the cost for that, as well as for training purposes. We cover the travel costs for the personnel and or the students. The students, um, we often transport to our wind job centers to take the work keys exam. So we have to cover the cost um, that the school bus will take those young people to the wind job centers for work keys. Um, our program is one where we're recognized in the catalog of courses with Mississippi Department of Education as uh, employability skills, meaning that the young people who come into our program can re receive up to two Carnegie units toward graduation if they're in the Jobs for Mississippi Graduates program at their respective high schools. The caveat with us having uh, MDE Carnegie units is that I have to hire uh, certified teachers. So the personnel in the schools that implement our program are licensed educators. That's vitally important um, because they have the requisite skill set to implement a curriculum, to control the classroom, as well as mentor and motivate a, a room of young people. Uh, our program is one that we have a recognizable curriculum. We are an affiliate of Jobs for America's graduates um, where 30 other states have a program just like Mississippi in their state. And each year we take a group of our students to the national competition. And I'm so proud and elated to know that usually our students from Mississippi, those students who had all of these barriers, all of these characteristics, we're usually in the top five in most of the competitions. And the competitions may be public speaking, financial literacy, um, interviewing skills, resume writing, critical thinking, all of those major components of our program, our Mississippi students are often placing in the top five. This past uh, March, we were in Orlando, Florida, and we were in the top five in public speaking. We were in the top five in financial literacy, which is a written test with percentages and formulas, the whole nine yards. And I'm so elated to report that our babies, they were stellar. They did exceptionally well um, at that competition. But again, that's our program, Jobs for Mississippi Graduates. Um, some of our employer partners, Nissan, AT&T, Entergy, Warehouser, Milwaukee Tools, Continental Tire, and Amazon. I like to make that known in my presentations because these employers have witnessed our program. They have come into our classrooms. They've been able to see our product of, of the students in the JMG program from the time they come in the program to the time that they're graduates. And they formulated a relationship. And when they graduate from high school or if they go on to post-secondary institutions, these employer partners are, are available to offer them employment. And that's so vitally important because not only are we preparing them, but we're also making certain that we formulated those relationships with all of these industry partners to ensure that our young people have a pipeline to major industries in all of these various sectors in our state. That is our presentation, Jobs for Mississippi Graduates. I, I often tell folk I love what I do. It is a passion. It's my ministry. Um, as a licensed attorney, everybody often asks, well, why, why are you running a nonprofit? And you could be making a lot of money, supposedly, as an attorney. But that's not my heart. That's not my passion. Um, the challenges as it relates to our program, is, as always, is funding. 
Um, we've been very, very fortunate to receive some grants. Uh, some grants have been discontinued. Um, I, I think I got the gray hair in my head because I'm oftentimes I'm wondering how am I going to keep the program going, keep the doors open, keep personnel paid, provide the supportive services for our students, um, the whole nine yards. But um, I'm, I'm a firm believer as, as a Christian that God provides. And he has, I must say you all, for 12 years. And again, this year we're, we're challenged financially, but I trust and believe that we'll be able to continue to provide our services. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Yes, sir. No, there's no fee associated with being in our program. Um, again, that's one of the uh, assets or the beauties of our program. It is at no cost. Um, we're able to write grants, receive donations from different corporate entities, and that's how we're able to continue our program. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. We have a partnership with those school districts, and we can serve students in those, those counties, in those school districts. But I have to have a contract, an MOU, with the school district before I can come in and implement our program. That's a liability issue. That's the legality of it. But I have to have a contract with your school district in order to implement our program. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am? contracted with mm -hmm. and it, it makes me very excited so do you specifically target certain areas of Mississippi like I heard Hollandale I heard Riverside I ho heard Old Ben and I heard LaFleur or Sunflower uh -huh. a lot of schools in the Delta so is that something you do or it just worked out that way uh, we make presentations uh, I'm, I'm the marketing person as well um, last week I was at the state superintendents conference where I'm presenting this is our program this is the merits of our program this is what it requires and in turn, those superintendents who desire to implement our program, they'll call me and say, yes, Ms. Williams, we would love to have the JMG program. And that's kind of by word of mouth. Um, I have not had a whole budget for marketing, in fact. So I have to go out and make presentations. Uh, usually in the spring of the year, I'm going from one school board meeting to the next, just promoting our program. And from there, um, school districts decide if they want to partner with us. Okay, thank you for that. We have several online questions, mm -hmm. but the first question I have is we have some parents and some students in the room. Mm -hmm. What advice or what um, steps do they need to take uh, to get started? Say if they're still in middle school, if they're in high school, what would be the next step that they would need to take? What do they need to do now um, for better preparation to go to the next step in their life, either to work or to college, community college, four-year college, what awesome, have you? Awesome, awesome, great question. As I noted earlier, parental involvement is so vitally important. Um, during the summer months, uh, when my young people, when my children were younger, um, I always required them to read. I always took them to field trips. We took the initiative to go to the airport, to talk to the pilots, to talk to the stewardess, um, in the event that they wanted to be an airplane pilot. So it's vitally important as parents that you're, po you're exposing your child to as many opportunities as possible. Um, is it costly? Yes and no. Uh, a trip to the airport is not going to break anybody's budget, I don't believe. But certainly across the summer months, make certain that your young people are still academically engaged. I used to go to Walmart and buy workbooks that had math problems and, and reading and phonics in there, and that's what they would work on across the summer. Um, with your middle schoolers right now, you can ask them, what is it that you want to do? If uh, your child say they want to be in one of the STEM professions, then you need to expose them to any various uh, uh, STEM camps that the universities may have. If they're interested in uh, being a truck driver, you may want to take them out to one of the uh, truck driving uh, facilities that are around the city uh, on Lakeland or on 55. The quest as a parent in preparing your young person is maybe to assess where their interests are, and then you cultivate that interest. I can't stress it enough. As parents, you have to cultivate that interest in your young person very, very early. 
Um, for our high schoolers, we know that most of the schools have summer reading. How many of you have made certain that your young person that's in ninth through 12th grade, that they have read the requisite books that the district requires for summer reading? Um, if you have a job shadowing opportunities at your place of employment, take your young person to work with you. Let them see this is what's required in the workplace. Um, I stay on my 27 and 32 year old about getting up and being on time, being punctual, whether it is to uh, go to the church to volunteer for an opportunity, please be on time. You can't stress that enough as you raise your, your, your children that you stress punctuality, that you stress how to dress, that you let them know you have to be ethical. You have to be ethical in the workplace. Those are things that parents can do very, very early to ensure the success of their young persons, their children. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are, there's another question. It says, can you talk a little bit about recruiting, how students apply and are subsequently selected for the program? Okay. Um, we have what we call an advisory council at each of the high schools that have our program. That's usually composed of the principal, the guidance counselor, as well as an individual from the business community, an individual from the local church, the local pastor, to have this advisory council to say, I think uh, Johnny would be a great fit for the JMG program. Um, that's one way that young people come into our program. The other is the school officials know who would best benefit from the JMG program. And thirdly, word of mouth. Um, the field trip to Florida, you would be amazed at how many young people uh, put on their choice card for this upcoming school year. They want to be a part of our program because they take the young people to Disney World. Um, so word of mouth, um, the students that are in our program, they often tell others in the building. They may tell their younger siblings at home that the JMG program is a great program. And in fact, those individuals, uh, those young people often want to come into the program as a result of listening and talking to the participants we have. Thank you. Another question. What resources does JMG require of districts that sign on to participate? Dedicated space in the school, participation in meetings, financial, or anything else? We have a, we have a combination. Uh, certainly foremost is the financial obligation. School districts that partner with us, we have a cost, a fee of $28,000. The $28,000 is usually covered by the district under their title dollars that come from the federal government. Um, we require the schools to make certain that we have a classroom. We require the school district to ensure that they populate the program with at least 30 to 40 students. We require the district to abide by our requirements where we uh, take the young people out of state for the national conference, we ask that they send the students to the state conference, which we have here in Jackson, usually in the spring of the year. So those are, uh, and the contract spells out specifically what we require of the school district and what our requirements are. So it's there in the contract. Great, and someone mentioned, asked about, you talked about partners. Is there an opportunity for students to connect to partners outside of being a part of one of the school districts that are participating, how are those some connections that, that could happen through JMG? Yes, we have what I stated earlier is our out of school model. Our out of school model is where we will have a central location in a particular town or county and we will have those hours of operation probably from three to six where young people can come after the school day and still learn resume writing, interview skills, um, how to do job searches, the whole nine yards. But it is our out of school program where we cover the lease for that particular building. We make certain that we staff that particular office with one of our job specialists, our teachers, the whole nine yards. But we have to ensure that we have the funding for an out of school program. So our program is one where if we get so many grants, we owe a grants, TANF grants, we can provide our services to more students. But if we do not get those particular grants, those particular funding opportunities, then we're limited on the number of students we can serve. And you may have said this already, but are those, is there an area in the Tri-County area or where are those particular out-of-school programs held? Um, historically, we've had an out-of-school program uh, in Gulfport. We've had an out-of-school program uh, in Jackson. We were at the Jackson Medical Mall. 
we've had an out of school program in Greenville. And I tried to strategically place them north, central, south, southern parts of the state. Um, in East Mississippi, we usually try to have a Starkville site or an Oxford, Lafayette County site. Okay. Um, another question. Any support services, I think you may have to answer that, outside of the classroom for schools, you answered that. What connection can a student or a parent make to JMG now? Uh, by all means, um, I hope the number is presented there. Um, call our office, 601-978-1711. And just say, I'm interested in the JMG program. I would like for my child or my daughter, uh, my son, to participate. Um, if we are in that particular county, in a school district, um, by all means, we'll be able to provide those services. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Any other parent? Any questions? Well, let's give Ms. Ramona Williams a <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank all of you for listening.